Good morning. I will be continuing with our uh, Sunday school lessons uh, for the next week. This will be for March the 14th, and the title of the lesson is Celebrate, found in Luke 15, verses 20 through 32. Let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this day that we can come again into your house, that, Lord, we can study your word, and that we can learn to be more like Jesus each day if we would just follow his instructions. Please bless this lesson. Help us to grow in what we need and how we too can celebrate when someone comes to you as the, for their Lord and Savior. Again, be with me as I teach. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. <laughs> We're continuing with our study of Jesus' parables that we find that in the book of Luke, there are many of his parables that Jesus used as he uh, was teaching the people about the coming kingdom. His uh, three-year ministry and a lot of his teachings came through these parables, which, were, of course, we know that a parable was a uh, spiritual lesson from uh, an uh, earthly uh, venue. And so we continue with that. In the chapters of Luke 13 through chapter 16, we see that Luke has talks about Jesus' focus on getting to Jerusalem. Jesus knew where his goal was. He had to get to Jerusalem to do what his father sent him to do. So that's the, this is where he is, what he is working with now. As he was proceeding from this, he was going through these different towns and villages, and as he was there, he would teach to the people and talk to them and tell them because he wanted them to return uh, to respond to his uh, call. But we do know that very few were willing to listen to what he had to say. So the three parables that are brought out in the chapters 13 through 16 uh, kind of focus on this truth that Jesus is trying to tell the people what they need to do uh, for the truth. And the three were, the first one was the parable of the guests who arrived late. If you remember that one, that is, uh, shows that the urgency of repentance. Jesus was trying to tell the people, you can't wait, you can't put off, you've got to do it now. The second one was the parable of the banquet, who, which focuses on those who made excuses for not accepting. You know, they, they were, the people were invited to the banquet, but they all had excuses, and it's the same thing today as people are presented the gospel message. They always have excuses why they can't accept Jesus today. And then the third one was the parable of, of Lazarus and the rich man, and you remember that story. And this was showing, Jesus was showing the danger of waiting too late to repent. There, there will come a time when, when God will say, that's it, and you'll no, no longer have that opportunity to repent and, and accept Christ as Savior. The parables that we're going to look at in chapter 5, or the one we'll look at, is these are uh, also are a little bit different. They are declaring the love that God has for the lost. Uh, and the three here that, that are brought out in, those, in, chap, in uh, verses 20 through 32 is the first one was the lost sheep, and the second one was the woman who lost the one coin, and then the third one, of course, was the lost son, or what we call the prodigal son. So our lesson today is going to focus on this last one, the prodigal or the lost son. We Just a little bit of, of the background because it doesn't cover the whole story. Is we know that this younger son of this, uh, of this father decides he wants his inheritance now before his father dies. He takes his possessions, the father gives them to him, he takes them, he leaves, he goes into a foreign land, he gets involved in the... The, the living that was going on there and he loses everything that he has, ends up in a pig pen feeding a farmer's pig, having nothing to eat for himself. And he realizes what he has done. He decides that what he needs to do is to return home to his father. So our lesson, actual lesson today is going to begin <coughs> with verse 20. So let's look at Luke 15 verses 20 through 24 where we're going to see forgiveness granted. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, 
I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to call your son. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they begin to celebrate. Okay, let's look now at forgive, the forgiveness that we find here. We're going to start in the middle of the story. We know that this younger brother, this uh, father had two sons, and the younger brother had come to his father and demanded his inheritance uh, before, while his father was still alive. And this would have been a terrible insult in, that, in those days because it was the same thing as saying, Father, I, I'm over this. I just wish you were dead. I won't. I want what's mine and I want to leave. Now, of course, we know that the elder son would have gotten the majority of the inheritance, but there would have been an inheritance for the younger one. So he asked for it, and even though this was an insult to the father, we see the father here graciously gives his son this inheritance that he has asked for. Well, the son immediately packs up everything he's got and he leaves, and he goes into a foreign country, taking all of his of his money. While he is there, he is involved in all the things of the world and he loses all of his money and, and immediately finds himself with nothing. He's in a strange country, he has no friends, and he has no money, nothing to live on. So what happens is he is forced to take a job. He has to do something in order to live. And the only job that is offered to him at this time is that he has been hired by a farmer to tend to his pigs. Again, another insult to a Jew. This was considered unclean. Pigs were considered unclean, and this would have been about the bottom, bo bottom of the barrel for the poor, poor boy. We see that he has fallen so low that, you know, he reaches the point that he's almost willing to eat the pig's slop. Now, I don't know how many of you all have ever dealt with pigs. I had to have one when I was growing up for 4 H Club. And I don't, I hope I would, I mean, I'm thankful I never was hungry enough that I wanted to eat what they ate. But he had reached that point. And at that point when he realizes what his mind is telling him that he's going to have to do, he, he, he recognizes how far he has truly fallen, how far he has gone beyond the decent thing to do. And so what we see here is that he gets up to return home. He says, I'll go back to my father and I will ask for forgiveness. Now, he decides that the best thing for him to do, he says, I'm going back to my father, not as his son, but I'm going to go back and tell him <clears throat> that I am willing to be a hired hand and I will work for him. So we see that his meek return was very different from his haughty departure. He went away, a rich boy, he was ready to, to live the life, and he's coming back, someone that had reached the, the bottom of the barrel and trying to take care of pigs and maybe eating what they were eating. Now, <clears throat> Luke goes on in writing this to say that the father saw the son from a distance. It seems that this father loved the son so much that every day he went out and he looked across the land to see if there's possibility his son would come back. He, he lived each day hoping and praying that this son would come home. And so he was there every day watching for him to return. So when on this particular day he goes out and looks and he looks up and he sees his son in the far distance coming. And scripture says that he is, he, he is so filled with his compassion and love for this son that he runs to greet the son. Now, this is, uh, uh, in those days, a, a nobleman, a person in this, would not have lowered himself to run a, at anything. But this father, the, the compassion and the love that he had for his son, he was willing to run to greet him. And as we look down through here at what this father does, we're going to see the comparison of the heavenly father with the earthly father. Uh, we see the, heaven, uh, the earthly father glad to see his son. And we know that our heavenly father, God, that God has joy in his heart at receiving any sinner who repents and returns to him. And so this is what we're going to see in this prodigal son's return. Another thing that is, is obvious is that the son comes and we don't 
the, son, the father is not repulsed by the smell of the pigs on his son. This son has been living in a pig pen. He had no place to clean up and, and prepare himself to come home. He came home as he was. And so he would probably was not one of the best smelling people around. But the father did not even, they didn't even phase him. He immediately embraced his son and he kissed him. And, it, and scripture kind of suggests that he did this repeatedly. He didn't just give him a kiss on the cheek and stop. He just kissed and kissed. He was so thrilled. He did not even have to, he didn't want to hear what the son had to say about an apology, what he had been doing or anything. The love and the compassion that this father had for his son simply flowed from his heart. And seeing him back, he was so thankful to have him back. But the son, give him credit, he stuck to his plan. He tells his father, he says, Father, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. I've sinned against God and you. I don't want to be called your son anymore. He confessed that he said, My sin is against you, but it's also against heaven, which meant, of course, that his ultimate sin was against God. He realized that the shame that he had brought upon himself, his family, and his father, and in his heart, he truly believed that there was no father could ever claim one who had behaved in such a manner. So he comes before his father very humble and, and very uh, hurt and upset because he knows he does not deserve any type of, of uh, welcoming or anything from this father because of the way he has acted. So the son immediately again says, okay, now I'm going to do what I come back to do. I'm going to ask my father if he will hire me as a hired hand. He had realized back in the uh, pig pen that the servants and the hired people at his father's uh, place was treated much better than he was there and that even though he could not be a son to the father, he could, he could be there and work and he would be treated fair, he would be able to eat and he would be taken care of. But the father wouldn't even let him finish. The father was still so, so excited and, and thrilled. And the father immediately speaks and says, oh, listen. He turns to his servants. He says, servants, you go and you get the robe and you bring the robe and put it on my son. You bring sandals. The, the boy was barefoot. This, which, this was a, sam, uh, a symbol of a slave. The boy was barefoot, had no shoes, but he says, you bring sandals and you put on his feet. And, you, and he said, I have a ring and I want you to bring the ring and I'm going to put the ring uh, on him to, uh, to stress the fact that he has come back and he is, he's, he's, I'm telling him that this young man, you're not going to be a servant. You are still my son. And think about that from God's point of view. We as human beings do a lot of things, but God never stops letting me be his daughter, letting you be his son. We're still his children. He loves us and he wants us to come back to him. And so this father is showing that at, in this stage. Next, the father then turns to the servant and he says, Hey, I've got a fattened calf at home. I want you to go home. I want you to kill it and cook it. Now, in the meantime of this taking place, the young boy, he took the boy on home, I'm sure. He's, the boy has had time to clean himself up, put on clean clothes, uh, and rest, and be, and be prepared. And then the father comes back, and the father says, Hey, I, we're ready to party. We're ready to celebrate. He, has, he is so overjoyed and so happy, he wants to make a point in this son returning. Because in his heart, he thinks... You know, here is a son that in his heart for a long time was afraid and, and kind of believed was dead. But he was back and he was alive. He had been lost, but now he was found. And so the father says, now is the time to celebrate. Let's have a party. Now let's move on to a change. This we have seen as a son that did what he did. He came back. The father has forgiven him. He's ready to begin his life as his, with his father again. There's celebration. But there's another side to this story that Jesus gives. 
Then looking at Luke chapter 15, 25 through verse 30, we find resentment ex being expressed. 25 through 30. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in, so his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the, the son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. Wow. Whole different story. This older brother in this period of time has been out in the fields. He wasn't at home when this, son, this brother, younger brother came home. He was out in the fields uh, working with the workers, supervising the laborers as they were taking care of the crops. Probably a long, hot, uh, tiring day for him as he started back home. As he came into the uh, place where he lived, he could hear coming from his home music and dancing, a sound that was not a normal thing that was taking place. And he knew something was not right. He sensed, uh-uh, something's not going on here. He, he, it's, it's something happening that has never been happening before. So instead of going in, to find out what was going on, he turns to one of the servants that's out there and he says, hey, what's going on? Why, why all the music, why all the uh, uh, racket and stuff that's going on inside? Now bear in mind at this particular moment, he's not angry. He's just curious. Something different is going on in his home. He's come home from work and he doesn't understand it. He's just curious what is going on. Well, the servant responds with, your brother has come home. Now this servant probably showed the same type of uh, ex excitement and joy just as the father had. He was the father was happy the boy was home, the servant probably was too. So his ex in his excitement, oh your brother has come home. He's excited because he thought the, the, younger, the older son would appreciate this. But this older son was not prepared to hear that type of an answer. He wasn't prepared to hear that his younger brother whom he is very angry at coming home. Uh, and then, on top of the fact that he's home, he hears the servant say, oh, and also your father has taken this fatty calf, which has been put up, and they've been taken, it was put there for a special reason. There was going to be a special time when they were going to kill this calf. Well, this father has taken it, and he's killed it, cooked it, and is celebrating for this young son, who this older brother thinks is a sorry person and he's doing all that for him and, it, and at this time his whole attitude changes because the celebration is for the prodigal who is now back safe and sound. Now he wasn't happy. Instead of being happy the brother becomes very angry. He's sullen, he's stubborn and so he refuses to go into the party. The father hears, the servants, I'm sure the servants went right in and told father, your older son's out there and he's not coming in. So the father goes out and says, hey, come on in. I want you to come in uh, and, and, and join the party. And he says, I want you as my older son to celebrate with us. All things are good and great and I want you here with me. But this elder son had other feelings. And so he turns to his father and he says, look. Now that's the, that's the thing, look. And then he gives three different times as to how he focuses on himself, self-centeredness, self. And he looks to his father, and the first thing he says is, Look, father, I have been slaving for you all these years. Second, look, father, I have never disobeyed you. I've always done what you told me to do. And the third one, and Father, you've never even taken a goat or anything and given, a, given me a party that I could have with my friends. What do we see here? We see this elder son 
expressing jealous disappointment. You know, his father had never done anything special for him. His bitterness could be heard as he spoke to his father. And so he says, listen, this son of yours, this young son of yours, he didn't say brother, he says this son of yours has taken, your inher taken his inheritance before you ever even died, which would, was an insult. He left, he spent it all on prostitutes. And so he says, you know, yeah, I'm angry. He was angry that the father should show preference to a younger son and go ahead and kill this fatted calf and celebrate because of this particular son. So we've got two, a, a, a young man that's come back and repented and the father's happy. We have an older son who is very upset and angry as to what has happened. So let's see what reality really comes through in this, in this parable. Let's look at Luke 5, 31 and 32. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So the father, in a very tender voice, reminded him, Hey, you're still my son. You'll always be my son. You'll always be the elder son. And you'll always be with me. The, le the legacy of of the, of the term of the uh, uh, firstborn was intact. Everything that belongs to the firstborn, it's yours. It has not been touched. And all of that's going to be belong to you once I am gone. The father then goes on to say, you know, hey, we both have a reason to celebrate today. After all, this is your younger brother. He is your younger brother, one that you... Uh, should love as, as I love. So I want you to join in just because your brother who has been considered dead is now alive. He was lost, but now he is found. You know, we all are prodigals. We've all been prodigals at one time in our life. We were dead in our sins of trespassing. We were lost before Jesus came and gave us eternal life. We're kind of like the sheep. We go astray. If we didn't have Jesus as our good shepherd, he's the one that found us and brings us back each time that things go wrong. He is our good shepherd. So just as the angels rejoice in heaven to those who come to Jesus every time someone is saved, becomes a child of Jesus Christ, the angels rejoice and sing. And so we, here on earth, we should join with them that every time someone comes to Jesus Christ and is saved, then that's a time for us to celebrate and have joy and happiness in our hearts because we have a loving Father who loves us and who always will welcome us back if we simply come before him and ask for forgiveness. He never, ever stops loving us. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that you don't stop loving us. We know, Lord, that we do so many things that we wonder why you do continue to show mercy to us, and it's only because of who you are, because you are God Almighty, and you have that love for us. And we're so thankful that we can come before you and ask forgiveness when we do the silly human things that we do. And Lord, we just pray that you'll continue to guide us and direct us each day. Use this lesson, Lord, to help us to be forgiving and, and loving and so that we too can celebrate when someone comes to you. In Jesus' name, amen.